Hello, and welcome to the most exclusive episode of the Dojo to date. Today, we're going into the 40 Club, and you are not on the list. It appears you are on the list. Salt service? You know, sometimes you haven't worn a blazer in six months. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Dojo here on Mr. J Wegg's channel. Today we have an exciting fact chart based episode that I know you're gonna love. We have one quick sumo shout out this episode, and it is to you, all of the subscribers. Uh, yeah, we've seen an uptick in subscribers in the past couple months, so to all of our new subscribers, welcome. We are glad you are here. So, uh, after this past Basho and after all the talk we've been having all year about Ozeki runs, I started thinking about, like, the terms of an Ozeki run, where you get 33 wins over three tournaments. It's, it's an 11 win average. It's so mathematical and so precise. Uh, then I started thinking, in sumo history, what are the cutoffs for people getting X number of wins over three Basho? Hence, the 40 Club was born. Named so after the fact that these are the people who have gotten 40 wins over three consecutive Basho. Spoiler alert, Hakuho wins. So yes, the 40 Club is just another thinly veiled pretext to celebrate Hakuho. Drop it. He's the greatest Yokozuna of all time. And join the dojo and celebrate Haku Ho. Yeah. So older Rikishi are going to be at a disadvantage in this very specific metric of dominance because uh, back in the day they had fewer basho in which to get a run going, and also they didn't have 15 days in a tournament until 1939. So people who had their peaks before 1939 are going to be unrepresented or very, very underrepresented. And the way this works is that if you get these three Basho chunks and they overlap, they still count. So let's say a, a made-up Rikishi named Hakuho ends up winning the first, second, and third, and then he also ends up winning the second, third, and fourth. That doesn't count as one chunk. That counts as two separate three consecutive Basho chunks. Cool? Now, I picked 40 wins not only because it's a cool round number, but because the Yokozuna standard seems to be set at 13 wins in a tournament. If you get 13 wins, it's considered the Yokozuna equivalent, and this holds up if you look back through Yokozuna throughout history and their promotion, which I have on previous episodes. Uh, I was very surprised at the omission of Haramafuji. Now, some of you Haramafuji heads like me remember that he took three out of four tournaments, and all three were Zensho, except for that one in the middle. It was the dreaded... Yokozuna hangover, and he didn't get 10 wins. Because this is the thing with the 40 win. If you get fewer than 10 wins in any of the three, you can't get to 40. And in fact, you have to average better than the 13 win Yokozuna standard to get at it. I wanted to create a new and exciting metric that just measured the relative dominance of Yokozuna. You can easily look at how many Yusho and Jun Yusho, but how dominant were those wins? Hence, the 40 Club. Now, if we're trying to use this as a metric to figure out who the greatest Yokozuna were, and I am, you want to look in and see who is rising above the crop of cream, as so I understand the metaphor. Now, 20 Yokozuna in the 40 Club is a nice, round number, it's fun, and it's easy to deal with. But if we're trying to figure out relative dominance, there's a pretty easy cut we can make to exclude several members of this list from greatest ever discussion. I call the VIP section of the 40 Club the Akebono Lounge because American Yokozuna Akebono achieved the 40 wins over three Basho three times. We're considering that the bottom line. Mm. Anyone below that line, you were great. But you weren't Akebono great. And, like anyone in the 40 Club, there are some wonderful rikishi on the list, including Dai Yokozuna Wajima and two of the Wakanohana. And of course, here you see several of the people I was talking about before. And as you'll see on the sheet with the asterisks, we have a few of the older Rikishi from the 30s who managed to pull this off in the very, very early days of the 15-day tournament. 
So who are these other 11, you ask? Well, as I said, there's Hakuho at the top. So the greatest of all time discussion is going to start and end with Hakuho with me all the time. There's just no mathematical way to explain away Hakuho's dominance. There just isn't. Uh, so instead of doing something weirdly arbitrary and culturally nonspecific like a Mount Rushmore, I would try to divide these guys into tiers. Now the top tier, of course, Hakuho, greatest of all time, just talked about. Now let's go down to the bottom of the Akebono line and see who lives down there. We had a bunch of Rikishi who achieved this feat three times or five times exactly. Akebono, Takano Sato, Tochi Nishiki, Tamano Umi, and Futubayama. Now Tamano Umi is a very interesting case because, of course, he was one of the Yokozuna who died very young. He died in the middle of his peak at age 27, having never gone Kyujo, having just won a few tournaments and gotten a whole slew of Junyu show. So, very interesting to see what he would have done with a little bit more time, considering his very strong showing on this list with pretty much only half of a career. The fact is, he was doing the absolute best sumo of his life when he passed away, and all of his appearances in the 40 Club happened in the last two years of his life. So, I think I'm going to have to do an episode on Tamano Umi. The other person I want to look at in this group is Futabayama. Now, most of you who are sumo savvy know that the consecutive wins record is probably the only major record Hakuho doesn't hold yet. Uh, but it, it, it belongs to Futabayama, who had five straight Zensho in a row. Unfortunately, none of them were in the 15-day tournament period, so none of them counted for the 40 Club. He still counts as being very awesome, because when they went to the 15-day schedule, the tournament directly after his streak, he ended up winning only seven more Basha. And keep in mind, he won seven more Yusho when there were only two Basho a year, so... That seems to be Hakuho level dominance, so Futabayama, I'm sorry that my arbitrary metric is cutting you off, but respect. Of any of the 20th century Rikishi, I would be most fascinated to see what Futabayama could have done if we could have put him in modern savings with modern nutrition, modern training, and all of the modern sumo things that they take for granted now. I would be very fascinated to see what he would do. And now, when that raises us out of the single digits, we have a huge jump from people who achieved the feat five times, Futabayama and Tamano Umi, to the next person who achieved it a dozen times. So there is a definite step in the tiers between Akebono line and what I call the Asashoryu line, so named because Asashoryu was the one I was just talking about with 12. So, we have five Yokozuna sort of in this second tier underneath Hakuho, and they were pretty much the alpha dogs of sumo for the 20th century. Kita no Umi, Taiho, Chiyo no Fuji, Takano Hana, and Asa Shoryu. So, I dove in even further and created more arbitrary stats to figure out who was the most dominant of those five. Well, so I ended up looking at these three metrics. How many times they achieved the 40 Club, what their top score in the 40 Club was, and what their averaged top three Basho score was. First place again, of course, Hakuho. He was the only one to achieve a 45. He did it twice and then had a 44, which means his three Basho average was 44 and two-thirds, by far the best we have, especially since we're only talking about five points between 40 and 45 that are even possible. And after we see Hakuho's 45 perfect score, we have a few 44s in there, close but no cigar, from Taiho, Chiyonofuji, and Asashoryu. And then Kita no Umi and Takano Hana with a 43 top score. Then we move to the averages. Who had the highest average after Hakuho? Well, we have Taiho at 43 and two thirds, then Chia no Fuji at 43 and one third, Asashoryu at an even 43 average, Kita no Umi ends up with 42 and two thirds, and Takano Hana 42 and one third. I know a lot of people think that the last thing sports needs right now is another stats geek, but I think digging into stats like this helps us show relative dominance of Yokozuna across eras, which is of course the thing sumo geeks like to discuss the most. And I know there is no actual way to be able to judge across eras which sumo wrestler would have won, but for me, it's still Hakuho. And the 40 Club proves it. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode. I hope you like some of these spreadsheet-heavy episodes. If you do, please let me know. Uh, if you don't, uh, my name is Chris Sumo. So we're going to have a few more episodes before the Basho starts. My bolder -er predictions and another episode on Tamano Umi and a deep dive into his history. Don't miss it. Everyone stay safe, stay strong, stay healthy, and I will see you in the 40 Club. Now, I'll see you on the doyo.